for everyone. Um, thank you for your time. Um, actually, the book I have done for Yu Yang was a few years ago, um, on the occasion of one of uh, Yu Yang's solo show in China, in Beijing. Um, I have to say it was, it was quite uh, something to uh, been through the whole kind of process been working with Yu Yang uh, because I know him since year 2000. Uh, since uh, you know Yu Yang was studying and working uh, with our group, you know the end of 90s group, um, post sense sensibility, including Chiu Zhijie, Zhang Hui, and oh many other um, interesting artists. And that time, how Yu Yang involved in the art um, crowd. And that's how we know each other. Um, then I, I recently, uh, just now I told Yoko in 2006 that Yu Yang called me uh, because we know each other already very close as friends. And Yu Yang called me and said, look, I want to be a serious artist. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe we should, uh, maybe we should do something um, together. Then I think, yeah, maybe that's the, the moment um, how we start to really uh, work closely together. And he was in many of my shows um, in China and outside of China, in Italy, England, in the museums, and outside the museums in public, whatever. So Yu Yang has become one of the most uh, important artists for the generation, uh, I would say after 2005. And he's a particular kind of making art. Uh, I, for me, is, is very um, convincing because this also matches with my interest of direction of seeing art uh, in the progress of medium, media, and artistic concept. So um, finally, I have to congrats, um, say congratulations to the artist, Yu Yang. Um, finally, he brings us a lot of interesting works. And you can saw his work in Yoko's um, curated project here in our part of Hong Kong, and also um, many in many other places. I think his recent work, recent exhibition is still showing in the King's College in England. And um, he had recently uh, also showed in Tang Contemporary, um, and so on and so on. So I think, yeah, Yu Yang is one of the biggest coming star. Um, yeah. So hopefully you can read the book because I was I have to feel I have to say a um, little bit sorry to some of the um, people who contribute text to the book that we cannot really invite uh, to come to here, uh, especially one of the guy called uh, Gregor Jensen. Now he's the director of Dr. Dos um, Kunstale, and yeah, uh, I have to say special thanks to him because he was um, did uh, writing a text for Yu Yang in. Uh, in honor, <laughs> yeah. So maybe I should uh, ask Yuan to say something. Let me introduce about uh, this. So actually, it's starting from 2003. It's almost uh, the past the 12 years of work of a process. Actually, it's uh, starting from uh, uh, starting from 2000. 13, that we process a lot of a project basis. And then for the work process, and then we come out with a move, uh, artists that we, we've been passed a lot of hard work and efforts. So for creative, the words are from me is the most of a book like this inside uh, the book. So what I think about it, I, I don't know what, what else I can say. Because the time I've been spent with uh, Chang Chun and then also the, all my colleagues, for this salon to so go through that we're having a communication, that's the most meaningful for me. So I think this is, at least at the booklet, you can see the most of my introduction. So I think the words are the more than I can say. So you all for full theory to have a question, and you can please do collect the book work and then have a question and feel free to ask. Okay. <laughs> um, I think one of the most interesting things that we've seen in your mm. practice recently, and this is mm. to say, like, I've known you for 
I think mm. seven or eight years now, um, mm -hmm. has been this shift towards works that talk about their own process. So the piece that you showed, for example, in On Off, which was a major exhibition we organized at the Ulan Center early this year, um, was actually 901 sheets of paper that contained, I think, something like 17 million photographs, all shrunken down into tiny size, but together showing the process of the creation of the paper on which it was ultimately printed. Of course, too small that anyone could ever even see that these were photographs, but in other words, creating an object that contains its own history. So these were images that showed everything from the trees standing in the forest, the trees cut down on the truck and the paper mill, reproduced to pulp, drying, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you made a piece recently as well where you um, cut up a, an audio tape and, and used that to capture the sound of the tape itself. And even I think some of your, your paintings lately too, which have been about um, interesting uses for things like two-dimensional uh, barcodes that we scan with our phones now, or kind of randomly using uh, binary code, uh, are often talking about you know, the ways that objects and images uh, get created now. Um, uh, this is different from what you were doing in a piece like The Moon, which we just installed at UCCA as well in our, in our atrium which is a massive construction. You can see beautiful images of it in this book uh, that consists of like 4,000 energy-saving light bulbs, this piece, which is just stunning. Um, I don't know, was there a specific moment of transition? Uh, did it have to do with your work at the Central Academy as a teacher? I, it's, it seems like there might be a connection there, but it, is there one? What is it? Um, what, what's the most important kind of moment been for you these last few years? <coughs> well, for me talking about is things like this, because of I was talking, discussing with other person, I actually, for the judgments, for the question that I have, so how can I create the, develop the, uh, uh, the personal creativeness and then moving into the character life? I think for this kind of style, for it will be accepted by the publics. So it was a build up and all the elements together. So I was searching and looking for, for our, the artist, and most of the artists should have the perfectionist. For the most popular creativeness, So mostly you have to have a first of all deep thought to creative the what you want to create. So you can look at the different shapes. So the mo the every part of the my art, it's just like you're writing a book, writing a novel. So because you're discussing each chapter, each has a different stories. It's art is the same way. That's why when you're writing a book, you have a chapter and a story behind to complete the one chapter of a book. And I think as the art, the process is the same way. So before you go into the next movement for creating a new art, you must be contained the story and the things of what you want to create. And that's how I look at it about the real art for a uh, point of my view. That's how the book is created. Sorry, and I'm not a, a person not uh, familiar with his work and the words and uh, comparing it to other expertise. But then uh, I have very simple question, and uh, I like one work very much. It's, an, uh, it's a little battery on the chairs. So this is a very nice piece, yes. Because and, uh, uh, also and, uh, you describe about and, uh, what's uh, contained inside the battery. So that's also all your thoughts and charging into the battery. So the butter is left on the chairs. That is very symbolic piece for me, what your approach is. Also, another piece and, uh, in um, uh, determined piece and uh, in uh, um, encounters and uh, section. And uh, also the sculptures and uh, was made in a very special process. Oh, this is uh, kind of something uh, in charge in the batteries. So that and uh, also this is um, um, 
big and uh, kind of sculptures and uh, made by special process and uh, you just uh, selected one stories and a story just uh, to be and uh, decoded in a certain program into the design the certain form but uh, you just make a very and uh, subject input and uh, only kind of entry point the rest of the parties and all the kind of process of the program automatically so it's kind of autonomy so this is uh, i just uh, get the feelings and very you have very special make uh, some relationships and uh, to kind of very much and uh, reliable relationships of those kind of the machinery also some mechanic things also some technology that are just very curious about uh, your relationships with uh, those kind of technologies process like a black box like a uh, symbolic battery or those kind of black box and make a program um, to put it simply when I select the technique or the media or actually the material, I do not have a predetermined um, idea as to what they should be. I do not actually dictate what is the exact form or the material that I'm going to make use of. Perhaps I should take it as pretty random. Any material or media is as good as the other. It could be an instrument for me to express what I want to uh, relate in a message. Perhaps during the process, so long as I have an idea, I could always get the suitable or the appropriate uh, way to express what I want to do. So. It's a matter of translating my thought ideas. And then during this thinking process, I would like to translate that uh, so literally into something uh, which can express my uh, ideal ideas or my thoughts in my mind in a very natural way. Sometimes translation could be in a very good way or a very horrible way. So because, then, uh, you know, that's why I'm asking what's the reliability, what's the relation with uh, those kind of program by computer with machine. Sometimes this kind of connection could be a single dimension, or at times it could be a multimedia, or could be an intermodal connection. So it depends on how well you want to put it through uh, during the interpretation and actually translation of your thoughts. You can make use of different ways to express yourself. Uh, he, he asked if you had, if, if, <laughs> if, you, if, if he had answered your question already. Yes. Uh, uh, to, as a supplement, through this uh, uh, coordination or integration process, I would always be able to um, secure some appropriate material. When I look at an element or a substance, conversely, that will always impact upon me. And I would always look at the material and the substance itself, and which can give me new thoughts and new ideas, which can further develop my original concepts and make it more comprehensive and elaborative. I, I, I don't know what to ask, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm, I'm the editor of the book, so I, I know I've been working with Yiyang for with almost all, all the process of the project. Um, uh, because uh, it's more interesting you just uh, giving your ideas and how you uh, understand and uh, in interpreted his work is uh, for the audiences to share, even if I just want to listen and how you see his work. Of course, yeah. but with uh, I found it interesting with your question, but I want to yeah. add something with it because I found um, through the process of the work, for example, when we work on the, uh, the project called the, the moon landing uh, project, so it's actually kind of making it a fake or a a reproduction of re-understanding these um, you know kind of human um, human uh, evolution in a, in a way of technology that how the Americans go on the moon. So we were discussing in the detail of the project that uh, um, Yu Yang was very much interested yeah. in kind of reproduce it, but through a a visual way, 
So it's like how visually we understand, um, but giving a, a kind of question behind the visual study of you know, whether the whole thing is a fake uh, or not, because that was in the question of, of that fact of the event. So I think, yeah, maybe with, with this kind of thing, I think it's always interesting in Yuyang's work, because also like what you mentioned of the battery work, I think whether it's real or whether it's <laughs> uh, fake with, with the technology, but the artist is giving a very interesting input and, um, and giving this uh, kind of ambiguous um, kind of position to the, to the art, so which I found is super interesting. And also with the, the fall, uh, light falling like the feathers, the project he recently done for the Shanghai Biennale. Um, and also I think with the project, ac actually uh, if you see the project, how the project installed, because I was there with the process of seeing Yu Yang and working with the workers, um, it's very purely physical. It's purely physical thing. It's, it's nothing kind of uh, mathematical or <laughs> nothing really kind of uh, uh, digital, but uh, through a process of this uh, um, physical thing, for me, you know, the, then that contains other things, which I would give it to another kind of um, perspective on um, on a poetical uh, or poetic way of understanding of art. So that's how I see um, how Yu Yang works in 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 the different kind of aspect, which is not only in the technology, but very much physically involved and um, and have a lots of kind of poetic thoughts behind it. I think yeah. this piece in particular, it might be just nice to have him yeah. say a few words about what it is and the concept yes. behind it, just because mm -hmm. I think it actually is a good example of a lot of the things that he's been mm -hmm. trying to do lately. Mm -hmm. uh, this project, during the entire process, uh, during the evolving process, in accordance with the spatial dimension, I adopted a sort of um, uh, digital uh, method uh, based on the computer uh, CAD, uh, the CAD process, in order to postulate a sort of logic, a sort of sequence in a two-dimensional as well as a three-dimensional way. So it is floating in a spatial uh, uh, dimension, and this is actually make use of the LED uh, digital data. In fact, we all know that this is simulated. This is a simulated um, set dimension. This is not reality. But well, when it comes down, it's floating about like a feather, and then it created a very interesting pattern and a particular form uh, which looks like a sculpture. So on the two sides of the uh, sculpture, you can see that there are small feather-like um, elements flickering around. It keeps on moving, so there is no end. It goes on and on forever in an evolving process. So it seems to be something which has co coagulated, it's has solidified. So during this process, it flows down gradually and swinging about and creating this wonderful sculpture-like uh, uh, image. When I fit, uh, fit in the, this installation, I uh, spend a lot of effort in uh, trying to position the exact location of all these movements. Well, as demonstrated in um, on this screen, you can see that this image has been done at least millions of times. However, every time it is different because each and every time the movement itself, this um, floating or this uh, falling um, uh, root of this dimension has illustrated a different pattern and a different uh, format, creating an entirely uh, variable uh, sculpture. That's the interesting point about this uh, project. I know you just said that it doesn't matter to you what media medium you're particularly working with, that you'll use whatever fits your concept the best. But uh, I'm still curious if there are 
kind of inherent differences for you uh, in making objects versus making images? Especially given that you've most recently turned to painting, uh, which I think for a lot of us was a little bit unexpected. It's something we, we hadn't really seen you do before until actually like last year. Of course, you have told us that you do not have an absolute predetermined idea on what material to pick and what a, a, a um, fixed form to, uh, to, to choose from. Actually, actually, I do a lot of planning, planning work for my installation. In, 19, in 2009, I uh, attempted to do a particular picture. This picture is actually um, being formatted in a lot of pre-planning. Pre, pre well, I, before I touch on art, I, I, I have a lot of theories, I have a learning on planning itself. So it, it goes together naturally. So you can see all these uh, disaggregated, disordinate, disorganized, the, the disordinated elements. When they come together, it can fit into a wonderful idea. So actually, uh, sculpture itself is also a conceptual thing because we have particular needs and requirements, and we have a particularly ideas expressed in the story to tell. We'll pick different um, uh, planning, uh, di di different objects to express myself. Well, be it an artist or a sculptor, so long as they satisfied what I want to get, what I want to express, I think they will exist in reality. I will make it work. I'm very curious to know about those kind of your sculpture series and, uh, and the shape formed from the determined by a uh, program. But uh, could you explain a bit more about what the difference, what the original text is? Perhaps I would elaborate a little bit on this piece of work. This new installation is um, actually uh, in the exhibition in Tanlan. It's it divided into two parts. During the evolving process, I want to show one part. Uh, we, we use Lin Yi to determine the Santi Max. And then the other one is the picture. Uh, this one is pretty random. You can see there are different layers and different dimensions, giving you a um, sort of a, a, the, the perspective. So when you put the two together, it creates some kind of conflicts and sometimes uh, some, some kinds of incongruence. And there's lack of uh, harmony, but they are being put together in the same uh, in same exhibition, in the same locality, that thereby creating a very stunning effect because of differential feeling. When the spectator look at all these two being put together, they refer back to the theme and the topic, and thereby, which brings around a collective personal feeling to create a new visiting experience. So instead, I would also put some description and, and thereby it creates some sort of a, 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 a wrong appreciation, a, a misunderstanding of what, it, uh, what it indeed I want to show. That means what I want to show and what people want to appreciate, it, there's a, 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 a some sort of um, differentials so that in appreciating this incongruence or, or lack of harmony between the, the what I want to do and what I want to tell them, what I want to written down, it creates a new ideas for pe people so that they, uh, they, they have a new state of mind. The old state of mind and the cognitive um, appreciation is no longer absent, whereas they come to another new level of sublimation and creating a new concept of appreciation. So you can see that the material here and also the uh, description 
And the title itself is all done by uh, a, a animated computer um, uh, programming. So well, you might think that it is all being sort of uh, automated. Well, what has come out of the computer is something which can be calculated and something which sometimes cannot be calculated. It creates a great conflict between something we expect and something which comes out eventually. What I want to tell is that what you understand something is not just something one dimension or, 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 or some, uh, some of the single elements, but instead you should always try to understand something from different angles or from different uh, time and spatial dimensions in order to get a comprehensive view. It is very much an integrated whole at the end of the day. We didn't really talk about it, and that's just, I know you spent so much time in the last couple of years teaching. Uh, he's really one of the best <laughs> teachers of, of young artists and, and mm -hmm. at the CAFA right now, mm -hmm. and has put a, an awful lot of effort into really building out the um, experimental art department there uh, as part of a much bigger evolution in China where you have practicing contemporary artists entering into the art schools and really engaging with students there. Uh, and I guess I'm just curious, what this has meant for your practice as an artist is there it, does it add anything do you do you learn unexpected things through your interactions with your students um, do they help you with your work I don't know like what what how does how do those two uh, sides of what you do kind of fit together Actually, to put it this way, a lot of people have the idea that an artist, let me put it this way, should be a full-time artist who should be trying to have a creative mind and have an innovative uh, concept all the time, 24 hours a day. But for me, I'm a bit different because I'm a person who likes to change uh, my uh, philosophical mind. I, I like to have new stimulus. I like to have new conflicts, which can bring about new concepts and which can stimulate my review of my old concepts and so that I could look at things from a new angle and try to um, destroy, to construct, and reconstruct. So I'm not scared of all these uh, conflicts and all these um, attacks. That is why if you go and teach, if you go to the art schools, you, you face the students, and then you um, uh, relay your ideas to the students, so I, I I really like to teach students. So uh, while I uh, stand on uh, the platform, I teach and I talk, actually I have great expectation from the students. I expect them to give me feedbacks. I expect myself to grow out of the old self, to recreate myself. Every day, I meet new things. Students will have new questions, will give me a hard time. Each new question from the students will fundamentally change my old concepts. They might stimulate new fires, a spark of um, new ideas from me. I'm interested in uh, why you uh, invite Yu Yang to join the Encounter project, and what's your interest as a because I, I know you as a very interesting curator. I want to listen to your opinion of what do you think about uh, Wang Yuan as an artist. Because uh, recently I'm very interested in the ideas of data visualization because uh, now we are kind of the environment is uh, full of the data, also information resources, but it's, uh, we cannot uh, um, manipulate the deal with uh, such a big data because how we can uh, work with uh, data with a computer. This is our reality. 
that then uh, uh, his ideas and uh, those kind of reliability, also some very trustful relationships with the computer machine. That I thought. But even if a uh, machine is uh, just you know and uh, doing by themselves, and uh, something not uh, really uh, expecting to result or not. So that then uh, I just then uh, get the feelings because then uh, you know that uh, interesting because then he just uh, selected text, some of the text love story and uh, some of the text of the speech of Martin Luther King, and, uh, and whatever he collected text, he just uh, put uh, input in a certain program to just the program going to be a uh, kind of digitalized data, certain making certain form like a proposal to him. He just uh, look at that and then he make a selection. So that time uh, he just make a decision. So these are, uh, you know, those kind of certain autonomy, also certain kind of something as uh, happened in the black box, those kind of autonomy, he just, uh, how he just uh, thinking about how he deal with this, how live with this. This is also a lot of the question. Also, the, uh, the result outcome the product, he put in some human touch as a kind of other artist. Also, this is uh, now, you know, also the way to uh, how live with together. So, and uh, I think, uh, you know, this is really um, can the can the opposite side of the question because uh, how we can data deal with the data visualization, how we can see the data, but then uh, he just another uh, question then how the data and the computer give to us. So this and uh, also the for me and and uh, it's very interesting and the question the proposition he heard that also that uh, one reason also when I see real sculpture I saw the only mostly photographs I saw the real sculpture the sculpture itself is uh, talking a lot that also and uh, physically as a material forms and uh, it's quite attractive for me so this is uh, two things yeah interesting I want to go in more in a uh, triangle kind of comparison uh, way of understanding Wang Yang's work. So I want to ask you another question because you were um, curated the show of uh, Rebecca Horn in your museum. And also, um, as you uh, know, the Japanese artist Tatatsumi Ajima. So I would say, you know, what the difference is with uh, artists working in the mechanist way and also working with the biggest data uh, or the concept of using data in their art. Because then uh, uh, Rebecca Holmes and uh, she's uh, quite active and uh, from the uh, 60s, 70s, and uh, those and uh, her, uh, her ideas and also come from a gender issue, because and uh, what a robot and uh, means and uh, non-human beings, those kind of mechanic creature, really beyond the gender issue. This is very kind of strong kind of question about what uh, human beings, what the humanity is, but then uh, you know that uh, also the um, eternity. Because a uh, robot also and uh, those kind of mechanic creatures and uh, working forever, ageless. This is also you know other the you know um, dream to and uh, this and uh, um, ongoing machines and uh, moving and uh, forever. So this and uh, just she just uh, imposed and uh, her own you know creation life into the machine. So this is a uh, lot of kind of very basic and primal and uh, relations with the machine and the human beings. But also the um, Miyajima thinks that uh, he is more kind of the, you know, also um, talking about the time, also, you know, infinity, because the machine also constantly counting the number forever. But then uh, I think, uh, you know, and uh, his work is uh, it's a slightly different. It's more kind of the, you know, and uh, how can I say, very organic and uh, human relationships and uh, without any of those kind of eternity ideas, because then, uh, this is kind of present. And the machine also just uh, uh, feedback to him. So it's really kind of the, you know, active relationships with a uh, kind of machine, also technology into him. But also more kind of the, you know, and uh, uh, deep, profound artist level to create a form. That's also my uh, kind of observation, yeah. Um, uh, we have two more minutes. Are there any questions from the audience? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's go back to the beginning. Um, when you were giving the introduction, you talked about Wang Yuyang as coming out of this uh, post sense sensibility generation. Uh, and I just, I guess this might be a nice place to end. You know, obviously, a lot has happened in art in China since the late 90s when this movement that you were both involved in uh, hit its kind of climax. 
Um, I'm just curious, do you still feel yourself to be part of a generation today? <laughs> At the beginning, you told us you have sensitivity, you have a kind of dimension and a sort of a more a sort of momentum. Do you have a long-term view uh, on the other generation in view of the fact that there are so many changes in the uh, uh, art um, uh, landscape in China? Actually, today, because of the fact that we have a computer, we have digitalization, we have IT revolution, and also in China, we have witnessed such a revolution in telecommunication, um, data, and so on. So today, we have become more mature, we become more prudent. We do not want the, the, the computer to dictate our life. We do not want to become enslaved by digitization. So because of uh, the globalization, we all realize that we are all running along the same starting point. Because it's a unified world, there's a borderless world. We need, indeed, more, what do I say, uh, to resolve our, our anxiety and our own over-expectation and our stress. That's more important. <laughs> 